It's King in Touch, and I'm in touch with one of my all-time heroes. That's a good way to start for me, but for you, maybe as well. It's Thomas yeah. from Phoenix. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time in this very busy Phoenix tour. Yesterday you played a gig, tonight you play a gig, and it's in two time zones and 200 kilometers away from each other? Uh, yeah, uh, we tonight we're playing um, Indianapolis, um, and yesterday we played Nashville. Uh, well, well, Nashville. How, how was Nashville for Phoenix? Nashville was one of my favorite shows in a long time. Uh, we played this very classic venue, uh, the Ryman Theater, that's well. That's where the birth of country music and bluegrass music happened. So it was, it's um, it's kind of a temple for that music, and it's you always feel very privileged that they let you in somehow, even though you're not um, playing by the book. You know, you're not you're not really it's not your your you're not playing bluegrass music. So the fact that they open this for you, it's really special. And uh, yeah, the and the venues. Uh, it's all wood. It sounds amazing. And it was, yeah, it's really a great place. Is there somewhere in the music of Phoenix a little bit of blues or, or bluegrass in it? Country, somewhere. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, Chris, the guitar player, is learning. Yeah, he learned bluegrass. He learned, he learned everything from like bluegrass to bossa nova and th or like there's there's some hank williams in there and there's some wow there's so much guitar tricks and licks that you can um there's a part that we play live in girlfriend well there's a little bluegrass riff and so when we played it last night the crowd erupted because it felt like it was meant to be so yeah there, there, there's yeah there's definitely some some things that are either technical or time scale a little bit of um um it's 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 mostly rit rhythmical i would say phoenix is on tour again finally how does it feel to be back with the guys in the van because you were stuck in in new york the rest of the band were, was in paris for a while yeah do, do they still stink in the band bus how are they uh the band bus is not the most glamorous lifestyle um but um but it's it's okay somehow we were talking about this amongst ourselves yesterday the a tour bus is comfy and it's like home in the winter because you're it's cold outside you get go get on your bus it's like camping it's charming and then you take a tour bus in the summer it's just gross it's just <laughs> like, it's either too cold too warm the ac never works it's they they crank it to an absurd level um yeah there's something it's tour yeah touring in, the, in a tour bus should be a seasonal thing it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so next time always festivals in the winter and all the phoenix tours are in the winter yes with the tour bus yes <laughs> you guys are coming up with a new album. It's called Alpha Zulu. And the first moment we could hear this album, a part of it was in the movie with Bill Murray. Yeah. Is that song still the song we can hear on this album identical? Yeah, well, so this song has a very dark, sad moment and a very joyous story. Um, the sad story and the, I mean, it's not, it's sad for us well, and it, on its origin, but uh, it's when Philippe Zdar, the our producer that we worked with for a long time, passed away. We went in the studio and we started writing, and that's the first song that ca we came up with. And uh, wow. so that song is very linked to him for us. But then um, we have, I mean, after, after we, wrote this song we were also working on on the rocks and um that movie had needed a very specific end song that was nothing was working nothing was fitting and so we put that song and then um it happens often with sophia when she's when she falls in love with an idea it's impossible to to change <laughs> you know and i'm the same like if suddenly you want something you're 
you, nothing that you'll replace it. Everything will be an ersatz of it. It will uh, not be the same. So um, we shortened the version. And now the version that you'll hear on the album is the long original. Uh, that's like twice the length. Uh, uh, it's more of an epic journey. But for the movie, it needed to be condensed in this like short little um, sugary uh, rush. But what a great honor for Philippe that it's in the movie and now on this album. Yeah, I mean, uh, this this song is really about Philippe. So it, there's yeah. a, and the album, you know, whenever we we when we uh, wrote this album, he was in the studio with us so many times that we still think, uh, you know, we still think uh, of all every every angle that when we work on a song, whether it's like track listing, song structure, uh, you know, like uh, we always think of like, well, uh, he, we have an idea of what he, what, what he would suggest or something. He has like a Jedi, Jedi-like quality to him. What do you miss most about being with him in a studio? Well, he, his talents are multiple, but he's a force of nature. He's, um, the most charismatic person I've ever met, I think. So it's like, and I've met Bill Murray, you know. There you go. That's a lot. Um, he's, uh, he was incredibly charming and he could, he could give you the boost you needed um, as soon as, because when you're in the studio, you're pretty vulnerable. You know, you, 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 it's not a time to play music to friends and family or record company or people. You, the songs are not done. You have an idea of what they will sound like, but they, they are not there yet. Philippe, not only he has the knowledge that he shares with you, he knows what they are gonna sound like. He knows how to mix them. He knows to how to bring you there, but also he, he'll boost your confidence and he put more about he'll be involved in the song even more than you are in your own song, you know? And so that's something that a lot of artists that work with him have been overwhelmed with when I was like Franz Ferdinand or like Beastie Boys or, or I think even Beastie Boys were a little scared of him because he was so involved in, in the songs that they probably thought like, it's creepy. Like he's too, he's too passionate about this. <laughs> Uh, and and in a way he's yeah. he's still yeah. present on this album then yeah yeah he's uh wow. yeah very much so and, and for everything we'll do in the rest of our music uh uh studio albums and even live because when we play identical live we think of yeah we uh you know it's uh we have a little of sequence where at the end it says in memoriam of Philippe Zdar at the end of this song because that song wow. is really linked to him. You just mentioned as well you, you met Bill Murray a couple of times. When was the first time you met that legend? Um, the first time he was I think he was coming back from a trip from India he was shooting uh, Darjeeling Limited in India wow. with my wife's cousin, Jason Schwartzman. And um, yeah, he came to visit us in Paris. Uh, yeah, that was the first time. But every everything is, is um, it's a whirlwind of um, uh, energy, emotions, and uh, passion, and insanity. Can, can we ever expect the Christmas song you did with him live on stage? Maybe around uh, the show in Paradiso, uh, that's the end of November. You you can't plan anything with him and that's the charm of it, you know? <laughs> he has to be, he came to our show at Radio City in New York a week ago. Um, and so he was there and, um, but you know, I don't want to bring, you know, we it was an important show, I didn't, we. We don't want to play a song that we've never played before. <laughs> that won't stay. I mean, uh, but it's possible that he, I don't think he would dare to storm the stage, but we wouldn't mind if he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The album is coming up in, in November. The, the, you will play the Paradiso in Amsterdam twice. Yeah. I can't wait for that because 
Phoenix and the Netherlands, there were not a lot of shows of your band oh. over here. So you're do doing twice now. So I'm I'm so happy. Yeah, we're making up for it. We it's true that we've yeah, we've we've not played that much in the Netherlands. Even music festivals, they were only a handful yeah. of times we played there. So uh so yeah, we're looking forward to there is a new song with Ezra from Vampire Weekend. We play it a lot on Kink these weeks. We love it. It's it's like the indie wet dream. You and Ezra together on a song. This is we, we waited such a long time for this, but there it is. And it's so good. Yeah, we you know, well, you mentioned Bill Murray. That was the only time we did a duet with someone. And then um Ezra is the second time because we when we're working on a song, we come up with these, we have these small parts that can go anywhere on any song. So we give them names. We have a whiteboard, we put them. So if there's a, you know, one will be called uh, Paris or, or, or whichever. And there was one part that was called Ezra. Um, so it's the part in the song that goes, what if we last and let's don't like, cause it sounded like him and uh, I'm friends with Ezra, so it's like I'm gonna text him and see if he wants to sing it. It'd be easier than trying to pretend to be Ezra for a second. And uh, yeah, he did it, and it was really better than we thought. Even when he would send the files, and and uh, yeah, that was such a fun experience. So I hope that that too that we could get to play the same way we'll play the Christmas song with Bill Murray that one day we'll play. <laughs> that's one with Ezra. But it was done remotely. Did you meet him after he sang the part of that song? We um, we met over the years playing the same festivals and then we became friends. So we were like, we went on holidays last summer together. And, um, and so that's why I felt like, oh, I can ask him to do something and... Uh, and really not put pressure on him because there's something when you ask someone to do something there's something for us that's very you have to commit to it and he's a friend that's close enough that if it's if it wasn't the thing we wanted or if the song is not good enough for him we wouldn't be scared to say no you know we know each other well enough and you want to be at that level of friendship because otherwise uh Otherwise, you have to, you know, you have to put a song out that's not good, and it's yeah. that music is always the main, the the main thing for us. The song is there. The album will be there in 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 not so long time. I can't wait to hear the whole album. Uh, I'm I'm gonna play now tonight with Ezra on King, but I would love to play your ultimate Phoenix track as well. Which one should I pick from the whole back catalog? From the whole back catalog, well, you could play, you could play girlfriend, because so that people know what I'm talking about. Uh, the riff, the bluegrass riff. It's so it, it ends up nicely the interview with the with the little uh, bluegrass riff. 